and an oddly Elliot-less episode of Mr. Robot, we get to check in with F Society, see what they've been up to. Let's put it this way, it's not paranoia if they actually are out to get you. It's Mr. Robot, episode 2.6, Successor, dot P12. Alright, D here, and welcome to this week's review of Mr. Robot. Spoilers ahead, just so you've been warned. Alright, so like I had said, this week we're kind of taking a look at seeing the effects of uh, everything that's been going on on F Society. A little step away from the imaginings of Elliot and really into the real world of F Society. And that's the one thing that we generally can trust uh, when we see Mobley and Darlene and Trenton and them, is that this is all actually happening. When we're around Elliot, there are some possibilities. Who knows what's real? Who knows what's uh, being truthful with us or fully conveyed? Uh, but with uh, the F Society and everyone there, we tend to get a very accurate picture of what actually is going on. Now, one good thing about this focus is it really gets us to take a look at Darlene, who kind of as the episode title implies, really is the successor to F Society, really is Elliot's successor to F Society. She's really kind of the strong arm. She's the person that makes things happen. Uh, so I'm glad that we get a chance to sort of see how all of these events really are affecting her. Now, last week we got to see a little uh, surprise moment as Darlene came in and everyone was gathered around the computer. Now, that was not for the successive scene of uh, the <laughs> bronze balls being dropped into Congress. If you remember, that was the DC uh, group that Darlene had already sent down a couple of episodes prior to that. No, this was a result of their hack into the FBI, specifically getting to uh, listen in on to a conference call talking about Bernstein. And Bernstein is that big super secret surveillance program that Cisco had warned Darlene about some time before. Uh, so now they get to actually go in, listen to it, find out it's another big NSA type sort of super surveillance program, uh, get to copy it, throw out the video, throw out the transcript on WikiLeaks, and get to see uh, the chaos that ensues after that. For F Society really is another Big victory for them. Uh, but <laughs> apparently all of that excitement sort of drifted their attention away to the real world and really paying attention to things because that right at that moment is when Susan, the big evil core lawyer, uh, decides to come home. Uh, now they've been using her house for a while, so I was kind of wondering how long she was going to stay away for. And this pretty much answers that. Not any longer. She's coming home. And the minute that she does, we pretty much know that she is dead. I mean, she walks in the conversation as Mobley is trying to leave and Cisco is warning him about the Dark Army, that if he takes off, if they get paranoid, that they are more than happy as a group uh, to take him out. We've already seen the downside that it happened uh, with our other uh, F Society uh, guy, uh, Romero. So. This is definitely a, a, a reality uh, shot that Cisco is trying to give to Mobley. And as soon as Suzanne walks in, it's, it's, uh, Susan walks in, it's really, there is no way that she's going to make it through this. I mean, they start to try and hack in and find out is there any information they get for her, some leverage that they can use. But the reality is, is she's an e -core lawyer. No matter what huge, massive things, they could have conspiracy against the president they could have found in those emails. And ECOR would have found some way around it. They would have offered her a better offer. The FBI would have offered her immunity, anything in order to get that information. So there really wasn't anything that they could do. Um, and there's a couple little moments in all of that. Seriously, as soon as you're tied up, you gotta go to the bathroom and Trent, you fall for it and you're all by yourself. You're gonna let her go and just carry her off. That was horrible. Of course she's going to attack her or try and get away. The kind of self-KO on the wall, uh, I don't know, I thought that was maybe a little bit much. Uh, but ultimately that does set it up for that very dark scene uh, with Darlene. And really get to see that sort of insight into her, how much she has carried uh, this pain of what 
I mean, both her and Elliot, obviously, it has shaped their entire lives. But you really get to see how much she has carried all of this and that Susan is one of the lawyers that she had remembered seeing on television. It's just a very dark scene, which, of course, leads up to the zzz, pool down uh, and dead in the water. Now, I think being stung by, hit by a taser, knocked out and thrown in the water, that'll probably drown you anyway. The later comment about her medical conditions and having a heart issue, I, I really don't think that would have played in at all. Um, maybe it made it more likely, but ultimately I, I thought that she would have uh, been taken care of even without that. And her explanation to F Society that it was all an accident, I don't think any of them were buying that at all. I mean, surface value, maybe, I don't know, but certainly Mobley, uh, his whole reaction. I think everybody really saw where the situation was going, and this might be a good story for them to accept, but I think they all pretty much know what had happened and why it did have to happen. So, you know, Mobley's out, Trenton's out, uh, having their nice little conversation on the train, and where Mobley's basically just saying, no, it's time to get out, this is all done, it's burnt, we're done, we gotta go. Um, I like that Mobley's kind of being the realist in this scene, especially as things uh, portray later on. Uh, but <laughs> we do have to get rid of a body, uh, which was really nice, throwing in the suitcase. I love that just that moment when they're sitting on the subway and the police walk by and they've got the, the hand up on the, on the suitcase right there. Hilarious. And then when we get to the vets, really was thinking with all the dogs and all the statement that this was going to be some kind of dog feed. This is how we get rid of the body. Uh, but they went for the crematorium, which I think was a much safer test. Now, could they have left her in the house if they were going to leave? I think Darlene brought up an important point is the group from DC is coming back. They may not get the messages with everything that's going on. I think possibility that they would, you know, could come back to the house so that she needs to get rid of it. I sort of understand that. Also, while killing her with the taser and letting her drown in the pool, you could go off to, oh, she had bumped her head against the wall there. She did it by herself, so there wasn't any physical evidence that somebody else had, had done that to her. Uh, but tasers leave burn marks, so there's going to be a couple burn marks on her. Might be some bruising from the, the wrapping of the wrist, so really probably did have to get rid uh, of the body. Now, of course, with all the Berenstein talk and everything, that had set the... I mean, the paranoia was already up in Mobley, and I love that he's getting people to go and check out his own apartment. Uh, that was just a nice little moment. But, yes, was he being paranoid? Obviously not, because the minute he gets in there, the FBI picks him up. Now, the scenes with Dom. I mean, Dom's spending the weekend looking at stuff. She's already talking to Darlene's ex-boyfriend about the gun. Because that's where Darlene had gotten the gun for Elliot's first meeting with White Rose way, way back, uh, last episode of season one. And that was the gun that was ended up using um, against, uh, against Tyrell. Now, I don't really know about the stamping, being able to identify back to the gun. Maybe there's some technology changes. Maybe there's some requirement changes I'm not aware of. I thought that was kind of a reach. But pointless. the, the, the point being with all of that is getting uh, Mobley in with the FBI was a great scene. One, it's nice to see Dom kind of throw everything down. Does she always have a sucker? You know, it's like every scene she's got one of those suckers in her mouth. But really, I just enjoyed seeing Mobley hold it together. I mean, really, I think throughout the scene there was the expectation that he was going to crack, and he didn't. I would just, after the whole thing, just says, I want a lawyer, says nothing else. That was perfect, it was smart, and as, of course, we find out afterwards, Holding him for that long was kind of a mistake. The fallout from the uh, uh, the Bernstein uh, video <laughs> was raising havoc on the FBI, and so they weren't going to be able to hold him anyway. But the reality was, and, and I, I'm glad that Mobley was able to see through it, is they actually didn't have anything. They had the name DJ Mobley, who was apparently a person, and Mobley here was a fan and wrote an Angel Fire page 10, 15 years ago, and that was it. Oh my God, you wrote a page about this guy and it was mentioned in a hacker thing. What do you know? There's nothing. There's, there's, there's no connection there at all. So I just, I like the fact that where we usually expect this is where people cave, uh, that he did not. And then, of course, we get the final little bit at uh, Cisco's apartment 
where Darlene wakes up and finds that, of course, Cisco has been talking with the Dark Army. He's kind of the Dark Army guy, but they want track of her. Um, they're thanking him for all the, the and that was the equipment, the, the fembot there, that was the piece of equipment that he had given to uh, Darlene to give to Angela to hook into the FBI. So I think this is probably something that um, Dark Army now has access to the FBI's files also. But ultimately, it's that mention of Phase 2. And really what this tells Darlene is that Cisco is playing both sides, or at the very least, using her for Dark Army's purposes. Uh, and the big whack with the baseball bat at the end certainly makes her statement clear. I don't think she killed him, even despite her, her little commentary about not feeling anything for killing Susan in kind of an understandable way. Uh, I don't think she has that type of anger towards Cisco. I don't think that that's going to go in that direction. Probably tied up and um, talking to him afterwards, grilling him about what he knows and what this phase two is and what is going on with the Dark Army. So that's something that we're going to find out, you know, in the next episode or two. I think we're getting back to Elliot next week. Uh, which I'm kind of excited about, but this was good to take out and see what is going on with F Society, sort of trace all of those movements forward there. Uh, now, the only other thing that we had going on was just Darlene, uh, really just Darlene's in the thick of it right now. Uh, she is kind of grabbing onto her power, but she doesn't really seem connected to it. She was pretty wasted during all the scenes that we saw. Her boyfriend is working for the, as a show for the FBI. We're well, not her boyfriend, her date. I guess they got on a couple of dates. He's working for the FBI. She doesn't really care much about him. He's kind of boring anyway. There was horrible karaoke going on in the bar. Um, and she's got a thing for older guys. Really, I think what this scene encapsulated, more of just making a statement of Darlene is that she wants something bigger and, you know, hey, screw you plumber guy for giving me shit for working for the company that killed my, my mom. Yeah, I can understand that. God, what a douchebag. Uh, but she's right. She's moving on up and she's taking care of her things. But really what this, I, th I think that was meant to be said but really, we have two little moments here uh, when Darlene is at the bar, and then later on when Darlene is at the, the vet's or the dog place or the dog kennel. I think it's probably a dog kennel. Um, is the use of the e-coin. This, I think, is Fisher's big e-core move, what he was working with White Rose from, and sort of where they have their competition, I think. How they're going to recover from the 5-9 hack, you've got the two diverging. White Rose has has his, his own, her own uh, idea of where to go from here, whereas uh, Fisher is putting all of his weight into this e-coin. Uh, I think that's going to be the new currency that he is trying to back up, and that's going to, that is his plan to recover e -core. This is why he kind of allowed things to happen. So they've mentioned this a couple of times. They mentioned it for the cab thing uh, last episode. They've mentioned it a couple of times today here. I think this is where Fisher's kind of play is. Um, and White Rose, I don't know what, what her plan is. I think we're going to find out probably a bit more of that next week. All right, and just a couple little points from the episode. Uh, one, uh, the file type tagline for this week, P12, it's a cryptography uh, archive file type. So, you know, for hacking, that totally makes sense. Um, the reference to uh, the other Ron's coffee at the very beginning when Mobley and Trenton are uh, chatting and doing their little flirty thing and they mention the other Ron's coffee that has the great Wi-Fi. That is referring to the Ron's coffee that Elliot takes down in episode one of this series that had this great uh, Wi-Fi, great internet connection because it was running a child porn site uh, through the coffee shop. So. Nice little reference back to episode one. And of course, obviously uh, tying things in that this has all happened before uh, episode one did. Um, to um, Is Trenton's parents always watching television? I think every scene that we have seen them, they have been in front of the TV watching it. I don't know if that's making a certain statement about the family or just society, um, but I think every time we've seen them, they have been watching TV. Um, Cisco has some great lines in this episode. One, uh, when they're discussing uh, how to get rid of Susan's body, when he refers to the, if you're talking about acid or wood chipping, I'm out of here. 
I just, I love that, you know, again, great classic uh, movie ways of getting rid of bodies. Uh, and also, once they do, they are dumping the body out and they have to actually pull her out of the bag. Uh, his line of, this is some traumatizing shit, you know. I just love that. I, I love kind of Cisco's little realism. I love those little real points in here, how people would honestly react, I think is great. Oh, and lastly, when, uh, when Darlene wakes up, there is a huge poster right behind her that says, Regulators, let's dance. That got me excited. Uh, that is referring back to the old Emilio Estevez film, Young Guns. <laughs> Regulators! <laughs> Let's dance. So uh, I think that just about wraps it up for us for this week. Um, just a quick little personal note, just hit 100 subscribers on this channel and I've got to get a big thanks out to all of you. Thank you so much. This is just a little passion project of mine. I love talking about the shows that I love and you guys are coming and watching them with me and, and sharing all that. With your comments and little discussions we've had, it really means a lot to me. So thank all of you so very much. If you enjoyed what I had to say today, you can hit that like button. You can press the subscribe button right here. It's underneath Elliot's head. Come back every week. Uh, we've got a few more episodes of this season of Mr. Robot coming in. Uh, I believe we've got another four coming up, so that'll be exciting. Uh, just started reviews of Fear the Walking Dead. You can click onto my channel and check those out. Uh, also coming up, we have September 20th, the return season four of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, very excited about that. I love all the Marvel properties and I really, really do enjoy that show. Um, and then October 23rd, we have the return of The Walking Dead, season seven, where we find out which of the group that we lost. So a lot of big excitement coming up as well. Oh, and September 30th, Netflix drops Luke Cage. They have done such an amazing job with all of those Marvel series. Really cannot wait. So if you hit that subscribe button, you can come back and check out all of those. And if you have any thoughts or want to start a conversation, throw those right down in the section below. Anyway, you can catch me on Twitter. I'm at Darren Jakes. Other than that, I'm D and I am out of here. Again, thanks all of you for coming and I'll see you next week. Take it easy. Bye-bye.